Hello everybody. On March 2nd, 2024, at 4pm local time, an intrusion occurred on the Ray Kennedy Peninsula from Schwarzenegger, making it the fifth one from the system since November 10th. Like a lot of you volcano watchers probably know, this intrusion did not result in an eruption, which is like what we saw on November 10th. At the time of the intrusion, there were up to 800 people in the Blue Lagoon, which had to be evacuated, creating an action-packed movie-like experience for the guests. There were also a few residents in Grindavík at the time, which were evacuated as well. All in all, these evacuations seem to have gone smoothly. Now, why did this intrusion not result in an eruption? Was it similar in size to the November 10th event, causing a lot of subsidence and drifting? Well, let's check out the details. So, now, as of the making of this video, it's been just shy of 20 hours since the intrusion started, and judging by earthquake activity in the area, it is safe to say that it's stalled. This makes it the second intrusion out of the five that have not reached the surface from the Schwarzenegger system, and the last time that happened, it was because one of the most powerful recorded dike intrusions on Earth took place, that primarily expanded laterally, creating a 15 km long magma dike in just six hours, which caused ground beneath it to rip apart like bread. So, since the intrusion on Mars 2nd didn't reach the surface as well, does that mean it was like the November 10th event? The short answer to that question is no. We know that because the GPS readings following this intrusion were weak to say the least. The first few data points after the intrusion show almost no subsidence or rifting at all. Just a little bit at the center of the intrusion that I've marked on screen. This suggests that for some reason this intrusion didn't get as much power as the others before it. So the 9 million cubic meters of magma that had accumulated in the magma chamber over a 22 day time span didn't all intrude, suggesting something must have blocked the path these intrusions have been taking out of the chamber. Which brings us to more speculative topics. Since this intrusion didn't see all of the accumulated magma leave the chamber, with early estimates suggesting only 1 million cubic meters left out of the 9 available, that should mean they're still pretty much left in the chamber under Schwarzenegger, which means it's still in the 8 to 12 million cubic meter range that has been required to trigger an intrusion. But why was this intrusion so weak? Well, like its predecessors, earthquake activity began right under the December 18th and February 8th eruption sites, which is where all the intrusions have started meaning there's a weak point there created by the November 10th intrusion. Then, it began moving south towards Grindavík, stopping just north of Mount Hagafell, and possibly reaching shallower than 2 to 3 kilometers below the surface. It seems to have lasted just over an hour before losing all its puff. In the last three intrusions, which all resulted in an eruption, it took the magma a maximum of 5 hours to reach the surface, and then it would erupt for up to 48 hours, meaning magma was being pushed out of the chamber for all that time. This means, during this intrusion, something probably blocked this path that's been used since November 10th, cutting off the magma flow into the intrusion in the progress. If this is the case, that this shiny highway constructed by the November 10th intrusion is destroyed, it could mean it won't be as easy for intrusions to occur, and more magma and pressure is needed to trigger an intrusion, which could lead to larger events. And since so little magma left the chamber during this intrusion, we might not have to wait so long for answers. That's just my speculation. Definitely leave yours in the comments. So, for the next two days, I'll keep a close eye on the GPS stations and give you guys updates through posts. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. 
definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.